25 is Ramsey. We're ready to go. And they're off. Fonseca sandwiched between Sheik and Carmichael. Once again now, it's Nick Way, though, on the inside. He'll get the whole shot. The move completed, but Skaggs shuts the door on him. There's RC right behind Ernesto. A lot of confidence there. Oh, Ricky already picked off a few guys. Ricky to the outside is Nick Way. We zero in on our leader. And so, after Way, we've got Fonseca. Ricky Carmichael moves into third. Robbie Skaggs back and forth. Brock Sellers in fifth. Talon Bolden in sixth right now. Oh, Ricky just went right down the middle of all those bumps. Didn't even care how rough it was, how rutted. I don't know if any, if he realized how hard that is to do. But. Fonseca, number 100. Ricky Carmichael now looking to the inside. Oh, what? He made it look so easy. Oh, he's pulling a tear off before Fonseca knew what hit him. Makes that pass stick. Incredible, David. And now the battle is for the lead. Nick Way, Ricky Carmichael's teammate, getting all kinds of pressure from number one. Carmichael has never lost a moto here. Boy, what a string that would be if he went six for six. Oh, look, Ricky just seems to be able to go anywhere he wants on the racetrack and not lose any time. Chooses the inside this time. And Carmichael, once again, our leader. You know, what really helped out was when he hopped out of that rough section into that left-hander. He hopped over the big bump, the one that sort of messed up Nick Way's timing a little bit. He was able to get that nice square line to the inside and make the pass. He's able to pretty much put the bike anywhere he wants in the racetrack. Third place, Ricky Carmichael, Nick Way, number 711, look out. Oh, Ooh, that was close. So Talon Bowen also passes Fonseca as they go down the fast downhill. Fonseca. Well, Talon getting a better start here in the second moto than he did the first moto, but there's no denying the speed that he had in that first moto. Or right here. Look at him. Just blast past Nick Way. So Talon Bowen takes over second place with Way trying to hold on to third right now. We've been looking forward to him all year, to be honest with you, Davey. I mean, we've been riding five years in Europe. He's real strong outdoors, and uh, we just didn't get off to the right foot in Supercross. So uh, we took a little time off, did some great training, and I think we'll be ready. I think everybody's going to see a great series this year. Thanks, Davey. Well, David, it's obvious that uh, both brothers have the same challenge opinion, that uh, they think they can uh, handle Ricky Carmichael and maybe win this championship. Back to the action now in our second moto of 125s. Ricky Carmichael getting a big challenge. That surprises me a little bit because Carmichael's got this place dialed in, got a good enough start, worked his way into the lead, and I thought he was gone. Here comes Talon Bolin just out of nowhere. Look at how aggressive the kids ride. I mean, just on the power everywhere, taking chances, but it's working for him right now. So Ricky Carmichael having to step it up. That's not an easy thing to do. He had a fast pace going. Anyway, Talon Bolin to the inside. Back and forth we go. Ricky Carmichael can't hold on. Bolin has the lead here in the second photo. Talon just didn't waste any time. I mean, he just now caught Ricky and already put the pass on him. Takes a tear off on the last jump. Almost looked like he was trying to throw it back to Ricky Carmichael. And so Talon Bolin now is our new leader here in the second moto. Valuable points, even though if Ricky Carmichael stays in second, he still wins the overall. I don't think Ricky thinks this is going to last, but he's, he's got to honor this challenge and stay with him. Ricky Carmichael now in second place. Talon Bolin trying to stretch it out a little bit. Bolin nuts. I, well, right there, I think Chad Watts is trying to say, maybe don't follow too closely. Memories of Daytona. Let's go down to the mechanics area now, Davey Cobes. <laughs> Dan, I got to ask you about that board you just put out, bowl of nuts. What's that mean? He's out of control. <laughs> He's swapping all over the place. He's going fast, but like I put on a pit board before, I mean, just to be smart. I mean, we had the reputation for crashing in indoors, so we'll get to somebody else outdoors. Shoes on the other foot, huh? I hope. I mean, I give, not taking nothing away from bowling. He's riding really well, but it just looked like Ricky was more in control. Well, I'd have to agree with him. But still, like I said, Ricky's got to honor this and try to stay with the pace. 
They want to let Bowen start getting some momentum. Who knows what could actually turn into throughout the series. Chad Watts mentioned that he'd like somebody else to take over the crash title. <laughs> Got his hopes up now as Talon Bullet looks very, very strong right here. Oh, he got into that berm. He was on the power before he even got there. He did it again in that corner. So now Ricky's intensity has picked up as well. And sometimes we challenge somebody like that. You take them out of their rhythm, and they're the ones that make the mistake. Oh, well, that's a big piece of work to catch Carmichael and pass him. Whoa, Bullet slipping out. He kept the uh, motor running, however. And you can see how far in front Ricky Carmichael and Talon Bullen were. His third place has a huge gap on third. He didn't lose any ground. Ricky Carmichael. As we take a look now at the Suzuki stopwatch for the intervals of one through ten. Uh, that much time you lose, you just a lap ago. He keeps getting those hole shots. He'll be high in the points. That helps so much. In the first lap, the difference between being out there in the top three and being outside the top ten is it computes to about 15 seconds of racetrack. To be able to just cruise in like this and enjoy it. Carmichael can see the checkers flying. What a way to start. Well, thank you. You know, I've been working really hard. I missed the Supercross season. I took that opportunity and that time off to train hard for the outdoors. I got great support from Honda, some good suspension. The bike was running really good. FMF really helped me out, gave me the opportunity to come back to the States. And uh, there was no way I was not going to do good today. You know, I worked so hard. Even the first moto, I got to take on the first corner. But if I don't pick up a physical injury, I'm going to give it everything I got to the end. And I appreciate the fans out here, too, cheering me on. That was great. Well, I tell you what, man, it should be an incredible series. It's good to have you back here in the States. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'd like to thank FMF and Honda again for giving me all the support. No fair. Oh, man, that guy, he was he was hauling butt. Uh, you know, he, he caught up to me and passed me, and uh, he, made, he slid out. He made a mistake, but uh, I guess that's the way it goes. I'll tell you what, it was fun to, to battle it out with him. He was, uh, he was pretty clean. He put a clean pass on me, and, uh, you know, he gets all the respect. He wrote good, but uh, he made one mistake, and I took advantage of it and uh, pulled out another win. Yeah, I got to ask you how this Glen Helen track rates for you. You have not lost a moto here since you were a professional. Oh, that feels that feels <laughs> good. You know, uh, I'm going to try to keep that string going. <laughs> Get nervous time here in the second moto as the 125 riders leaning in. The countdown is ready. The gate drops, and we are off with moto number two. Oh, Ramsey with a great start this time. He's been working on those starts, David. Michael Brand, off. yeah, Michael Brandis is right there too. Number 25, Nathan Ramsey, number 49, is Michael Brandis once again out near the top. He, up until recently, he may have been content to sit there in second behind Ramsey to see how things played out. It made Casey Lytle look like a blur. Look how hard it is for these guys to get over the doubles. What happens between motos, they put a little water on the racetrack. These guys are getting some wheel spin on the faces of the jumps. Casey Johnson behind his teammate Casey Lytle. Look at this, Carmichael and Ramsey. You can't get two better competitors than this. On the same pro circuit team, Carmichael to the inside. Ranges for third, we've got a battle for first. Ball into the inside, Brandis holding on. Well, he held him off the first moto. He figures he probably ought to be able to do it again. Riding right there, smart, all the way down that inside. Turn from Boland in the first moto. He's using against him now, so he's taking away his passing options. Well, till there. <laughs> Look at that. Talon Bolin is now our new leader. He Coombs at High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. The second moto of 125 action. Don't forget, stay tuned. The 250s are coming up next. It's been a wild 250 season so far. Michael Brandis trying to hold on to second place, but Ricky Carmichael is right there. Talon Bolin, who's trying to challenge Carmichael for the points battle is out in front. Carmichael, so it appears that uh, Bolin is pulling out in front. Here's the battle for second place. Ricky Carmichael, what a, what a leap. Came down hard on that suspension. Well, that's the same way that Bolin was able to make the pass. Carmichael saw it, did the same thing, just on the other side of him. Bolin concentrating, focusing, trying not to make that mistake that'll give valuable seconds to Ricky Carmichael. When Carmichael moved into second place, Talon had a five-second lead on him. 
Right now, it's been cut down to less than three. Let's go down to Davey now with Tyson. Tyson, it's a great start for town. He's out front, but I gotta ask you, how did he feel health-wise between motors? You said he'd been sick. Yeah, he was a little tired after the first one. He's had a little throat problem. He says he has enough energy for the moto. We know Ricky's extremely fast here, but we're gonna give him a heck of a battle here in the second race. Here's Maybe his stamina won't be what it's been in the past couple of weeks. Good shot of the interval between first and second place is Carmichael now picking and choosing. Look at him work that bike, try to get the power down. Sometimes just moving over two inches to miss a rock or something that'll give you a little wheel spin or much faster pace than he did in the first moto. It's nice when you can get out to the lead cruise and you don't have any challengers. Looks another time right there, his feet came off the pegs. Just little things like that. It doesn't slow him down or scare him, but it's it's things that didn't happen to him in the first moto. Now he's really having to put. Michael, rather than the other way around. No, that's good. I think as much as people adore Ricky, and you know, I'm also a big fan of his, it's nice to see him challenged. You want to see a great race, and Talon has been the only guy so far in the season to really step up and challenge him. A lot at stake for Ricky Carmichael, too, as he continues to waltz through the record book. Welcome back to Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. The second boat of the 125s. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs bringing you the action. Ricky Carmichael trying to put the heat now on Talon Volan. Has picked up some space between the two, as you see right there. Almost rubbing the back rubber of Volan. So the battle is on now. The serious battle is on. I think Volan knew he was coming. He may have just sort of bided his time and tried to get ready for the battle. I talked to McGrath about that after the first race at Glen Helen. He said when he saw Tortelli coming, he sort of backed off a little bit and just got ready. Talon may have done the same thing. Ricky Carmichael now cuts to the inside. Oh, what a move by Carmichael. Almost like he deked him one way and went the other. He did. <laughs> Look at Talon, comes right back. Back and forth we go. Ricky Carmichael looks back at him. Oh, the crowd is going crazy. Carmichael holding the edge right now. All the way down, trying to keep that bike low. And it worked. He got it back. Carmichael looking for the sweep. Talon Volan wants to take it away from him. While this great battle ensues, let's check in now with Davey Coombs in the mechanics area. Wow, Chad, now that was some action right in front of us. Ricky and Talon getting into it. Yeah, I mean, they both put some good moves on each other here, and they were clean. Neither one was dirty with each other. So it's going to be a tight race. I mean, it's kind of good to get a few second gap. I ain't saying we are or we ain't, but if you get a little bit of a gap, you can calm down and ride a little bit better. There's no question that Talon Volan has ridden with a certain amount of consistency, but uh, when you turn to Ricky Carmichael, it's consistent. Back finishing up the second moto of 125 action, and it's Ricky Carmichael. He led every lap after getting the whole shot of the first moto. Had a 14-second lead by the halfway point, went on to victory. Here he had to work for it a little harder. Quite a bit harder, I'd say. He's still riding hard. Look at him. He is pushing. Trying to open up a big lead and just take away all the hopes of Volan. As soon as you've been lapped, that's it. As soon as the finish leader goes across the finish line, you're done. And that's the case with Ricky Carmichael. At leisure, coming across the finish line, getting the checkered flag, has the 1-1 sweep for the second time this year. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you what, my Kawasaki Bridgestone bike was running good. and. Uh, Thanks to Fox and Oakley and Bell Helmets and, uh, you know, everyone who helped me get here. I'll tell you what, uh, I've been working hard and uh, I turned it around this weekend and uh, showed him his boss. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I uh, went 1-1. That's really important, you know, but talent's riding good and uh, every moto counts. And Talk about showing him his boss. Where have you guys had that little mix up there in the middle going back and forth? Tell us about that. Oh, it was pretty fun. You know, I was just trying to have fun. And, uh, you know, that's what racing's about, having fun. And, uh, you know, I figured that I uh, better not uh, play around too long because uh, he getting that pace and it'd be hard to pull away. But uh, I felt good and uh, looking forward to the next race. And, uh... 